the first ultimate support unit being released in uh, about a day or so, I wanted to get a run in in neural simulation with Hush uh, so I could do another one and compare it afterwards to see kind of how much she helps. Unfortunately, the bosses this week are terrible, but of the two, Sarder is the, the less terrible, but it's going to be kind of an interesting boss fight. However, Sarder is a good demonstration of the sorts of puzzles you have to solve with Hush if you want to get a respectable speed around time. So I'm going to talk about the various considerations you have to make when you're approaching a boss. When you're going into a boss fight with Hush, you want to consider how many times you're going to activate your ultimate and at which energy thresholds. On a boss like Sarder, he has several invincibility moments in the fight and you can't really just keep ulting from one to the next so you can ult once to start the fight once after the first invincibility and then once more after the second so it's a minimum three ult fight now determining the threshold that you ult at is a little trickier because it's going to depend on your personal power so it's going to be different for everyone for me I have a pretty strong hush, so I don't actually need a ton of energy for each of these ultimates. I'm ulting pretty much at the, almost the minimum required amount, about 50 energy. Now another consideration specifically for Sarder is that when he gets stunned, he drops out of the air, then gets back up almost immediately and teleports away. So if you stun him, it's very difficult to then follow up with an ultimate. However, the primary way that you're going to be applying burning to targets is using your stun. So the way you get around this is by triggering his CC immunity by hitting him with a slow, and then you follow up with the stun. The best approach is to build U energy at the beginning and then once he starts using a move where he's not going to be moving around too much, tag him with the slow, set him on fire. If you have a third unit using a support skill, use that here as well. And then go ahead and use the ultimate to get rid of his shield. If you're not able to get rid of it efficiently, you can stop the ultimate early. Uh, the first four seconds are free. And then you can do like seconds five and six without spending too much energy. But then you want to stop it, and since you're using Finia logistics on Hush, probably, you're going to have a damage boost for 10 seconds from the start of your ult. That will also apply to your bullets, which are going to do bonus damage to the shield. So you can stop the ultimate early and finish off the rest of the shield just by shooting them in the face. Once his shield goes down, he will go invulnerable and hop out of the map for a little while. Then he'll summon some clones, which will all try to kill you. The, the clones aren't super dangerous. When you see their eyes flash red, just sprint for about a second and they'll miss you. But it's very important that you also shoot the clones when they show up. Because you can build you energy off of them, and you want to be able to use your next ultimate the instant he lands. Once he lands, you immediately tag him with the slow, use all your support skills, and you want ultimate again. He might teleport, but the first teleport is he's just going to teleport in place, so it's not really a big deal. Now if your hush is less developed, you might not be able to get through his entire phase here with just one ultimate. So you can either shoot him a while to build you energy, but the, probably the best way to do it is to spend a longer time shooting him in the first phase. So you, you build up towards your maximum U energy, and then you just don't use all of that during the first ult. So you come in with some banked, and you don't have to deal with whatever he's trying to do in the second phase. After the second phase, he will once again hop out of the map. He'll summon clones around the edges, and they'll just they'll all shoot towards the center of the map. They do something it looks really dangerous. I've never actually been hit by it because you just have to stand at the edge and you don't get hit. I'm assuming it hurts. Uh, you can try this if you want. But you want to get to the edge of the map, you just want to shoot any of the clones there to build more U energy so when he comes back down, you can pop him with another ultimate. 
Now in this third phase, he'll sometimes do an attack where he locks you in place and then like charges up this beam of energy and whacks you with it. If he does this, you can't use any support skills. So it basically it's the end of your speed run. So you want to make sure that as soon as he comes down, you tag him with both support skills and hopefully you've got your ultimate ready to go. Another thing you have to look out for is during some abilities, he'll just get down from taking too much damage. But since he normally floats in the air, when he falls down, he'll probably fall underneath the beam. So you'll end up missing some damage, which you miss the kill. It's very unfortunate. Hopefully he doesn't move where he super armors. And he won't get knocked down no matter how much damage that he takes. So for this boss fight, the first time I did it, it took about 120 seconds. And I was spending about 83 seconds of that building you energy so I swapped my redacted over to uh, I think it was the phantom squad it increases your U energy recovery for your whole squad so basically they just cut down the time that I was building you energy and I managed to get the run down to 84 seconds so that's it's a 35 second time save just by changing the logistics on one character which is why I'm thinking that when test comes out and she presumably has a whole lot of U energy generation, then I can save you more time. Because the final run, 84 seconds, that was still about 44 seconds spent building U energy. Hey, Blackman, I really just finished these other ones. Why are these guns all too low? Just make me think about these things. That's my 10,000 steps for the day. <laughs>